What's going on guys? Zuko back with another Dragon Flight video. Hope you are all doing very well. I just want to look at this plus 19 freehold that I did. Um, it's the most damage I've done so far, I think, in a dungeon. So we're just, you know, we're building, we're growing, we're getting better and better and better every dungeon. And um, I'm getting better at sort of executing the rotation of the storm build. I had a couple people, I had one guy I think on the comments earlier criticizing me for not taking Ellie Blast. And uh, I know that's a conscious choice that I've made. I know some people even with the storm build, I think the most popular storm build right now takes Elemental Blast, particularly on um, Tyrannical Weeks. I understand why, but I really like the value of Static Accumulation. I like being able to get the refunds on Lightning Bolt, and I think it makes it uh, a really powerful spell when you're using it that way. And of course, having 20% more damage on Lightning Bolt is uh, really good as well. So. I'm, I'm fully indexing into this build, and I do also take Ice Strike with Swirling Maelstrom. I think it's fine. It's, it's, it's just as good as Converging Storms because sometimes on the single target fights, you really do need the extra generation on of Maelstrom weapon stacks. And particularly now that I've, I've talented out of Ellie Assault completely, and I'm all in on Legacy of the Frost Switch. So before my build was one point Legacy, one point Ellie Assault. And now I've switched it up to having two points in Legacy, getting that 25% more damage on your physical abilities. And you can see the Wind Fury damage here is pretty strong. And Storm Strike and Sundering, those are physical. And then my Spirit Wolf stuff is all physical as well. So obviously my melees are also physical. There's a lot of physical stuff going on in this build, including the Wind Strikes at the bottom as well. So it, buffing that by 25% nearly the entire time is really good. Our uptime on Legacy of the Frost Switch was 62%. If you, you know, factor in the fact that I'm we're, we're running from pack to pack, that's pretty much going to be up all the time. So, 25% more fizz damage, good for Sundering, good for Storm Strike, good for the Wolf damage, good for Wind Fury damage, very very good. And then the rest of our damage is, you know, of course, as it always is, mostly into Chain Lightning because of how much damage Chain Lightning does. Thorum's giving it 20% more damage. Um, crashing stars making it hit more targets all that good stuff there so that's the build that's what i ran in this freehold plus 20. we're just going to look at a couple of clips i'll show you the opener here um we absolutely blasted the opener it feels really good and uh, again i'm just really enjoying this build i love the simplicity of this build that you can just kind of rotate through crash lightning chain lightning and storm strike and that ends up representing a large chunk of your damage so we peaked at 500k here a couple of times and then we kind of hover around between 450 to 500k for this opening pack so it's just really really good um for these kinds of big packs like freehold has a couple of them there's a couple more later on uh that we also get to blast off on so it's just really good and uh Excuse me. The um, first boss fight is good, too, because it has multiple targets. Anytime you have bosses with multiple enemies, very good for this build because Crash Lightning gets the extra value, right? On two targets or more, Crash Lightning will give you more damage, right? It'll help you splash. So, um, Ultimon is a really good dungeon for this build in particular because uh, multiple bosses have multiple enemies. The first two bosses have multiple enemies in them. Um, and then... Uh, I think that's it. The rest of the dungeon, they're all single targets. But, you know, two out of five bosses having multiple targets, very, very good for this build. So, um, yeah, I'm going to show you, I think, the boss fight here. On every single pack, we're basically doing 120k or so, 130k. And then when we get our cooldowns back, we get to pop off and do a lot of a lot of damage, which is really good. I'll show you the first boss in a second here. I forget what this pack Yeah, We didn't do too much here. This is the bellows. You guys hurt so much. 150k at the end there. Here's the first boss fight. This is pure single target, so this will give you a sense for kind of how this looks. Um, this is without bloodlust too. So we lusted the first opening pack there. That's why our damage was so high. Get my Wind Fury totem down, and again we're gonna pop off with Wind Fury plus Doom Winds. Get going right away into that. Here comes Doom Winds, Chain Lightning. They are nerfing the Chain Lightning coming up. I think in patch 10.1.5 there was an announcement about that. Um, they're going to be nerfing the Chain Lightning significantly, actually, on the tier set bonus for Enhancement Shaman. Right now, when I press Sundering, right, our Chain Lightnings do 100% more damage. Um, with the change that's coming, they're only going to do 20% more damage. So that's a big blow to our damage uh, on AoE in particular. Uh, but it's going to also encourage us to press Lightning Bolt more on single target. And they are buffing the rest of our damage. They're buffing Storm Strike and Lavalash and Ice Strike damage. 
by like 20 percent i think on storm strike 50 percent on the other two so they are trying to compensate for that uh hopefully it'll help to improve uh keep our damage bait relatively the same we'll have to see it's definitely going to nerf our aoe damage quite a bit so we'll just have to see how that goes but here we get a sentence proc we're popping off our wolves are back up again swimming those so not bad by the end of this fight we're doing 87 to 90k here um which is really good that's there 90k at the very end 91 93 Got a big Ascendance proc at the end there. So uh, that's I'm very happy with that for this build. I think that's solid single target damage. Uh, that, that you know, And then this, this week, you're really worried about the AoE damage, not so much the single target damage. So here's another big pack here. Um, I do get a proc right away. Big Sundering. I think I'm doing, un for, uh, unfortunately, my Ascendance proc. I had a couple of Lightning Bolts in there because I was just hitting the single target enemy. So one thing to always keep in mind with this build, your Ascendance, when it procs, it's going to choose... The last spender that you used, either Chain Lightning or Lightning Bolt. Make sure that you kind of prep the next pack that you're about to go kill with whatever spender you're going to be using on that pack. So if I'm killing a single target enemy right here, but that fight is about to end, but I know I'm heading to an AoE pack, I should get that Chain Lightning ready to go. Maybe use Chain Lightning as my last spender, um, or at least make sure that my first spender is Chain Lightning on the next pack so that I'm getting extra damage. Again, there's another pack. Really, really good damage. I think I knock enemies up here. We're always hitting that 150 to 200k mark. And then once you get your cooldowns going, you're, look, we're past 200. We're 230k. With with Bloodlust on an AoE pack, it, again, like you saw, we're up to 500k. So it's just really good damage, guys. It's really, really good. There's lots of AoE packs in, in um, Freehold as well, which is really good. I think we do the boss fight here in a second. I'll show you. Here's just another AoE pack. Again, another 200k. I think we go into the next pack here as well. This is the beauty of this build. It doesn't really have cooldowns like other specs do. You know, you have Sundering and Doom Winds, but you're just casting them on cooldown. You do not care about what's in front of you. Lots of other specs in the game have to worry about making sure that there's actually a big pack in front of them before they uh, do their cooldowns. We do not have to do that. We just get to blast. That's what I really love about this build. Here comes the boss fight. Two target cleave. This is perfect for us because Crash Lightning gets that bonus when we have two target cleave. The uh, hunter just runs up and dies to Eudora. So that's fun. Here comes Doom Winds plus dogs. Okay, I'm going to pop them right here. I think I was waiting to see if the circle was going to show up. I get disoriented anyway. So I was yeah waiting for the blackout barrel and then I can pop my Doom Winds. <clears throat> in a second here there we go we're popping unfortunately we got barrel timing so that was actually very poorly planned by me i lose about five seconds there of uh of doom winds damage so that was a bit that was a bit unfortunate but again the two target cleave is just super good we're getting chain lightning value we're getting crash lightning value those are the buttons we just continuously press over and over again so our damage is uh solid and we get a proc there i forget what we end the fight on maybe 100k at the overall yeah it's about 105 overall not bad so yeah, this dungeon's uh, pretty solid for us. I think lots of dungeons are good now, and my damage overall is feeling really good. Um, I'm just noticing that the execution is going a little bit better for me. I'm making sure that I'm executing the build better than I used to be, and my damage has gone up by at least 10 or 15k. Like I did a dungeon right before this, and I did about 110k overall. It was a really messy dungeon, but in this one, it ends up being you know I'm doing 125k overall, uh, so it's a lot better. Um, yeah. Shark boss always sucks. Everybody hates the shark boss. Uh, I end up only doing 60k on him there. So that was unfortunate. But he's just really, really annoying. Uh, last packs here again. We're popping off 185k. Probably 200 earlier. I'm just getting to the fight a little bit late. Here's the last trash pack. Very dangerous trash pack. There's um the guy, the enforcers. Uh, the one enforcer here is going to roar, right? Very, very dangerous. If painful motivation goes off and then he does bellow, you'll basically die. And then his frontal... You got to watch out for Squall. I knock up Thundering Squall here. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Go back to that. I knock up Thundering Squall right here. Boom. Stop that cast. And then he does a frontal, right? The Enforcer does a frontal. It's very hard to see when there's, like, Consecration on the ground and all the wind is going around. So just be aware of that. Um, here it is right here. It's that white little cone that goes out. It's actually very difficult to see in this particular situation. I get hit by this all the time. So just watch it. Make sure you're watching for it. And, again, we're doing 200k. Uh, really popping off here. Here comes the final boss with Lust. <clears throat> Harlan Sweetie with Lust. Let's just see how much damage we can pump out. Lust is so good for this build because it just allows us to get more Storm Strikes in. Um, the Pally pulls him into the corner. 
kind of like the old school way of doing this fight back in uh, BFA when we were doing this fight, but uh, you don't really do that anymore because you just don't need to. Um, so anyway, it, it's whatever. He really was committed to this. So here our damage is uh, going off here. 95k off the start. Looking good. This is, again, where I really value having the Lightning Bolts rather than having Ellie Blast because Lightning Bolt is doing 20% more damage and it gives you refunds. And that is really, really good for single target damage, for getting the continuous damage rolling over and over again. Like, not dropping... Uh, I jumped forward there by accident, but not messing up and having uh, droughts where you have nothing to press. Really, that Lightning Bolt really ensures that you have buttons to press all the time because when it gives you a refund... That one refund can be the difference between bridging you into your next Storm Strike, which goes into your next Spender, which just keeps repeating the cycle over and over again. So I think that it's really valuable to me to have uh, the Lightning Bolts uh, going off there. Really enjoy that. Now, this Whirling Dagger is going in. A little tip for you, depending on what race you are. I'm Dark Iron Dwarf. You can get rid of the Dagger Dot. It's a bleed. You can get rid of it as Dwarf or Dark Dark Iron Dwarf. Excuse me, right here. So I'm, the dagger's about to go off, and I immediately pop my Dark Iron Dwarf Rachel, and I get rid of the bleed. That makes this part of the fight, like, super easy. And then I kept getting bopped by Paladins because we had three of them. They literally bopped me on cooldown, which was kind of hilarious because I have my own bleed cleanse. But it doesn't matter. I appreciate it. So thank, thank you, those guys. We get a proc on uh, Ascendance here. Lots of damage from Lightning Bolt again, and Lightning Bolt is resetting itself, so it kind of... Doubles, triples down. This second Whirling Dagger that just went out, I popped my Ancestral Guidance for that one. And then on the third uh, Whirling Dagger that goes out, I believe they bought me again. We'll have to see. Here comes Sabres again. I got my Chain Lightnings from my um, uh, Sundering buff. We're going to have to see once the patch 1.10.1.5 goes live if uh, it's even worth pressing Chain Lightning anymore in single target. I, I assume it still will be, but we'll see. And we're climbing up in the damage a little bit. It was low for a bit, and then we're popping right off here up to 80k. You just kind of have to wait for those procs to come through, and they will come through. I get bopped again by these lovely paladins. <laughs> Pretty hilarious. Um, and then we get a, a couple lightning bolts off at the very end here. 85k at the end for Harlan Sweeney. And then our overall damage is 126k. So here's what the damage looks like. Uh, the breakdown right here. Again, chain lightning is going to be your primary uh, button here. 100, 300k. Uh, chain of things there, but lots of physical damage as well. And here is the build. I'll link it down below for you guys. You guys can look at the build once again. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. How are you guys enjoying the storm build? I think it works perfectly fine without elemental blast, without converging storms. I'm taking ice strike with swirling maelstrom to guarantee the maelstrom weapon stack for single target mostly. And then I'm taking two points in legacy now. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What build are you running? For enhancement, Chalman, I'd love to hear from you guys down there. Thank you so much again for watching. I love you all. I will see you in the next one.